All right, Camp KDE, San Francisco, 2011. This is Wade Olson. I'm making a public apology. We had some magic going here. We started an interview. He and I hadn't met before. We did our introductions. Fantastic interview. No audio. So we're on this again. We're going to try to recapture the magic. Let's ask like I'm asking. I'm going to ask you these questions for the first time. You'll be surprised. <laughs> Not that surprised. A little alone. Right. Um, so first off, talk about your the presentation that you gave. Well, I'm John Lake, um, and the presentation I gave was on geolocation services and KDE, um, and how we're currently doing it on a very ad hoc basis at an application level, um, at how we'd like to do it as part of the platform level, and to come come up with one single solution that provides all the services needed, but how there are no current solutions that do everything we need and what we need to do to get there. And the question I asked at this point that no one could hear because there was no audio is um, about laptops. During the presentation, which is going to be on YouTube on the KDE promo account, uh, so you can go there and see the presentation, but there's one thing that confused me, um, and that was about uh, mobile devices like laptops and whether you needed a, a Wi-Fi connection or uh, whether it was a 3G service that you plugged in. Or, but when you talk about geolocation, some larger devices, exactly what that meant. So recap the answer. Yeah. Well, basically... Um, you can get you you can get your location from quite a different number of sources. Your IP address is usually good enough to tell you what city you're in, and for most purposes, like your weather widget, that's enough. You just need to know, hey, I'm in San Francisco. The weather's sunny. It's fantastic. Um, whereas if you're doing a navigation device, it needs to be more accurate. You need GPS, or you can use your 3G dongle um, or your Wi-Fi to give you a far more accurate. Um, location but then you get power drain so the system sort of manages that and decides what do we actually need to know how much detail do we need and it get, gets the, the location just as accurate as, as the application requires it to be. Right and the, and the great use case was uh, where you have a laptop or mobile device or something like that uh, tie it into a plasma activity you're at one location you're at work you've got your browser open nothing else because you're surfing then you go this is where we laugh because that was pretty good uh, and then you go back at night and then now it recognizes that you're at home or uh, at the local pub that you hang out at every night and then it launches an entirely different experience for you. Yeah, yeah. tied into the, 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 the placement activity system that's um, making great strides and you know, having your different types of sessions for where you are and what just triggering off that, yeah, I've now arrived at home, I can have my custom wallpaper and my you know, very loud music playing and I can be on IRC chatting with people in Caddy Cafe. Yeah, or even the simplest uh, change which makes everybody's life easier, the stop asking me what time it is, you know you know where I am. Don't yes. tell, ask me what time zone I am. Yep. You get off the plane, you, know. you arrive in San Francisco, you open up, it connects, it goes, ha, San Fran, change the time zone. You know, you're no longer having to fumble around going, what was the difference, or, you know, finding the location. Exactly, of the exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the, the second point of the conversation was Noise Bridge, which we both went to, yep. and we were talking about the fact that um, uh, we're software hackers, and even then sometimes we fragment ourselves into only saying user uh, interface, or I do application logic, or back-end services, but... These hackers at Noisebridge do it all. I mean, yeah, it, you yeah. name it. You name it. They, they, were there, they were soldering circuits onto boards and they, they sell kit sets that you can do. Then they, had, they were running around with a Geiger counter playing with radium. Um, <laughs> then there was a book group a bit further down. There's a, a kitchen where they, you know, where they do stuff. And then right. there was, sewing there, room a in sewing the front. room in the front. There was a dark room. They had a laser milling machine up in the back room that they showed us a bit later on. They had maker bots where they were making components for some of these kits. That, right, they're making their own they're making their own bicycles, they're yeah. making their own music. It was literally I mean you know our, our kind of our conclusion was don't limit yourself. These people do everything. They explore they may not be the best on it, but it is the curiosity, is the interest in learning yeah. more. Yeah. Regardless of the medium. And this is you know and what I'll say is that in KD we've got a little bit of this. We've got so many different communities doing all these wonderful things. But you know, there may not. There's the opportunity there to get interested in lots of different things and to, to cross over outside of the, the, the vertical silos and modules that we've had in the past.